Right guys and girls, Mark Crossroad here. Today we're going to do an iron compare between the Callaway Apex. So we've got the nice new Callaway Apex. We've got the forged uh, JPX from Mizuno 921s. And we've also got the Titleist T200. So we could call this category irons that look good, but offer some kind of help and are a bit strong lofted. I don't know what you think, it's quite so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how these compare to each other. I'm gonna to talk to you about some ideas of if you're getting fit, what to look for as well. Uh, we'll also take him on the course and do a fun game because that throws some element of the fit into it, which are interesting that I've done in other videos. Now in the comments down below, Titleist, Mizuno, Callaway, when it comes to irons down there in the comments, which one would you prefer before hitting? Let me know in the comment section down there. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you like the iron compares, hit the subscribe button, if you like the videos, they're free and we've got weekly videos and uh, we can all start learning and getting the best equipment together, can't we? Should we start with a good old look, stand by the ball. Standout winner is this middle one for thinner top lines, which is the Titleist T200. Looks absolutely gorgeous, stand by the ball. But it does have the most looking, I don't know if it's measured, but the most looking offset. So then the next best two would be the Mizuno and the Callaway, if you don't like looking at too much offset. And I would say the overall winner on top line, how much offset appears to be down there, blade length, is probably the Callaway Apex. It's gorgeous looking. Really joins here nicely where you can get some funny kinks. Nice medium top line. You see, a t I've got six irons in all these clubs. You see a tiny bit of the club out the back, but a tiny bit next to nothing. And it's a beautiful blade length. Titleist excels on this top line, but you can see this kink is quite noticeable, which then makes this really stand out as well, which might put some people off or not. I'd say the Mizuno is just a good all rounder. It's like kind of just nice in all places. And obviously this, when it comes to irons, you would argue this maybe is a very desirable brand. So Callaway Apex to start, like I say, looks great down by the ball for something that boasts so much forgiveness, and we will look at the tech of all, all the three irons. It does look compact and pretty nice. Like I could really see this appealing to every golfer, handicap wise. So low handicappers, good players, you know, pros would pick that up and like the look of it, as well as someone like 15, 20, 20, any handicap who wants to see a certain Nice looking iron, but with plenty of chunk around the outside. Sounds rockety. I imagine they're all gonna sound quite clippy in this bracket of test. I mean, this is like a gun going off. It's not, not nice, but it definitely, if you want that forged sound, I mean, this has got forged written on it, but it's like clippy. And like I say, all of these are six irons, but looking down at this and just looking at some of the numbers that are coming out already, I know that these are gonna be all a bit aggressive in the loft, which we'll talk about as we go on. What that might mean for you. That's a nice hit. I mean, it's three decent shots there with the Callaway. Looks good, feels good. Definitely clippier than maybe what I'm used to, but then I do have a six iron that's really clippy. So, you know, it's the numbers at the, day, at the end of the day that's gonna make me really sway into this. All the others combined with the looks. JPX next from Mizuno. Now the JPX maybe has the longest blade length, which I'm not a massive fan of, but um, that does inspire for some maybe a bit more confidence as they look down. What that actually means, apart from it gives you that feeling, what it actually translates out into is a debatable another question, isn't it? Let's hit the uh, Mizuno. Again, it's a similar sound. I'd say it's slightly more towards what Mizuno was, you know, about as in feel, sound, acoustics, and then closer, more the MP range, the forwards. I would say that was, I would say people would generally say that's a better feel and sound. Now what I'm doing, and this is a good point for you when you're having your fits, or even trying out in lessons, those kind of ideas. I'm hitting three of each and then changing, three of each and changing. If you wanna get a nice test where you're not getting into too many rhythms, with all of them. It's good to try and alternate through the clubs you're trying. Just a little tip for you there if you're testing with you and your fitters. Got that slightly clean, but it's definitely a more desirable sound for the people who want this bracket of iron. So they want help. They want a bit stronger lofts, but they want it to look decent. This one is going to feel more towards the better player end of feels, more towards the forged player sets while offering 
the help or the ideas of launch help more towards the uh, game improvement. I guess let's tackle that point when it comes to your fitting as well, because I've done this in lots of other videos. Now, when we say help, or when I say help, it's the feeling of help. I've done tests with cavity backs through the blades and you find the biggest denominator where it changes, where it helps, is not so much on the miss hits. They're hard to find because there's so many variables. You'd have to hit so many shots. You'd change your club three times by the, find, by the time you probably found a meaningful statistical difference between this and one with less help. But the launches change. This is why the lofts are, stro are stronger. But then there's a drop off for that as well. So I can manage to hit the six iron and get good distance. But when I did, I did this test left-handed where my speed is loads slower, kind of 15 to 20 handicapper range. And I actually hit the six iron no further than a more lofted seven iron because I, I was going falling off my launch mountain, if you like. So when it does come to testing these, and it is funny, lots of the manufacturers do give six irons as the testing club. You might find the six iron, even though it goes far, you might find the launch is not helping you or is it something you need to look out for when you're testing, which is where, again, you just want to push your tests a bit more. If you haven't got the speed to get this in the air, you can get it out of the rough down your lies and your launch is now compromised because the loft is stronger. Mm. But you've got to remember they are trying to deliver launch back without they weight them. So it's finding that balance, that tip. Right, one more with the Mizuno. It feels good, not much, but it definitely feels a less rockety than the Apex. Right, type this T200 next. Now, if you're in this bracket of ironing, you want really thin, beautiful looking top lines, this is the one. The offset is definitely more noticeable than the others. Oh, and the sound is back up with the Callaway. So the Mizuno is definitely a standout in the sound. I mean, this feels nice, but it definitely feels up there with the Callaway on the old rocket noising. You know, it's clippy, it's big, it feels brittle, it feels firm. I do think the offset might just scare a few, but you might not have an opinion offset, so then it, it's not going to worry you. I think the top line would appeal to lots. Like it looks not far off, to be fair, they're players' irons again. And then with these irons as well, it does lead into ideas of blending. Subject to your launches and what and the speed you put in that I was talking about earlier, I very much blend my set from a blade up to a chunky iron, from a wedge up to a six iron. So really quick stepping up to really chunky. Obviously this might be a, for all of them, this could be a six iron. I mean, I used to do this when I played tightless clubs. I had two six irons, I had a powerful six iron and a regular weaker six iron. And you might find that with all of these, just subject to what you bring to the table. Yeah, it feels nice, feels good. Definitely two louder ones, one slightly calmer. Three very good looking clubs. Should we have a look at the tech? And we'll have a look at the numbers as I collect a bit more data here. And then we'll do our fun little game to see how they come out on the golf course. So the Titleist T200s, they're calling it striking innovation. Whether it's tall level shaping or field T100 and 200s, they say have a maximum speed for forgiveness. T-Series is the power pack line of performance. Max impact technology T200 means you get maximum speed from nearly any impact point on the face. <laughs> They got a unique polymore core developed in partnership with Titleist Golf Ball R&D. So that gives it the dampening qualities, but it's still quite loud. There's more tungsten for tighter dispersion. So there's tungsten in the heel of the toe of this club. So they're moving that weight to increase the MOI. And it's a forged owl face for incredible feel. The T200's fourth face wraps around the sole, increasing ball speed on the lower portion of the club face. So if we look at the Callaway technology in the Apex, it's 100% forged body. There's AI design flashed cup face in the three iron to the nine iron. Tungsten energy core, three irons to the uh, utility wedge. Urethane microspheres from the three iron to the nine iron. So you've got forged body feel, AI face, MOI ideas. Tungsten, uh, tungsten energy core, again, MOI ideas, keep ball speeds up on that face. And the microspheres spheres are there for the sound and feel. So very similar tungsten in the club. It's got uh, forged blade feel in players distance iron is what they're boasting. Definitely, I would say it's not quite a forged feel for me, but plenty of tech. 
I said the JPX921 forged iron integrates the power of chrome alloy into a full body forged iron for the very first time is what they say. So we get a larger rebound area, wider back milled slot, increases stability on off center strike. So they're all boasting the off center strike help. Chrome alloy 4120 allows for club face apart up to 0.5 millimeters thinner. So the chrome alloy is allowing them to make a thinner face for faster peak and average ball speeds. Less extreme toe weighting. So additional perimeter weighting with toe bias for stability for off-sense hits. Uh, Mizuno have always been a bit more toe biased in their weighting. So they're all following a very similar pattern of help. So just finishing on the Callaway there, I've gone back around a couple of times. They do feel good. I would definitely, from the tech there, which there's plenty of in there, obviously you've got the tungsten weighting, heel and toe for MOI, trying to keep ball speeds off when we're dotting it around the face like we all do. I think two of the clubs boast kind of better feels when I wouldn't say that, I, I mean, they feel fine, but the Mizuno has to stand out in what they claim on the field when it comes to all the other help. Well, let's see if there's a difference. Let's look at the numbers. So let's look at these numbers. Ball speeds to kick us off. So the tight list is, well, it's not slower. It's 125 miles an hour ball speed with a 1.4 standard deviation, which bleeds it into this one. Actually bleeds it into this one at 127 with a standard deviation of one. So you could argue the Callaway is slightly quicker than the Mizuno and the tight list, but I would see them really blending with possibly the Callaway just stretching a fraction away from the tight list. And you see that in the carry distance, 211, 207, 208. But again, you've got to remember, we've got a standard deviation of three on this 2011. So that is bringing that down to 208. And this has a standard deviation of three, which means it brings it down below 208, but it also knocks it up to this one. And you can see from the free dispersion, look at the rings. I don't know, my software today is being a bit funny. I don't know why it's popping up there, but you can look at the dispersion. There's, is there a winner? I mean, the Callaway basically edging it but you've got the human strike element in there as well. Club head speed with all very much similar, 91, 90.6 to 91.1. Again, bleeding on the standard deviations. We've got the strikes, yes please. I mean, very, very similar numbers with all the clubs and the loft. So you do get the little bit lofted, less lofted in the Callaway, Mizuno, and then going up to the tightness. So we see this dynamic loft delivered bleeding through maybe similar onto these numbers with the Mizuno. Uh, the tight list doing quite well, you could argue with a little bit more loft. Spin rates, a little bit less spinning in the tight list. But again, look at the standard deviations. They bleed all these numbers. I'm seeing very, very similar clubs here. You possibly a fraction more launch again out of the tight list. Again, coming from that delivered loft. So we take them to the course, see if we can find a difference. We need to find a par three that's about 210 yards, people. That's a strong six iron, isn't it? What? Hey? So we've come to the 17th at St Andrews and I've firmed it all up. The green is firm, the fringe is firm, and the green speed is fast. We are 210 out over the road hole bunker. This could be very, very entertaining. Which out of the three clubs is going to win? Do you reckon any of them are going to hit the green? Post in the comments down below. Will I hit the green with any of them from 210? What am I doing? Right, Mizuno to start. So you saw how tight the dispersion was. That's a flat range, hitting three shots, three shots, three shots. Now we're gonna change per club, which is quite a good test for you to see if you can get any of the numbers that you've got repeating back out. And also to put some perspective into what happens when you get on the course, when you're gonna have bounces. And that's before we add any of the variations of grasses and lies, which make, well, the variations go up even more. And here we go. This is gonna be a challenge. So I'm having to hit it hard, I reckon the reach, as in the carry the bunker. I said, oh, Mizuno, that's a beauty. Stop! How firm that green is. Stop! Well done, Mizuno. You did well there. So Mizuno tightless Callaway is the order we'll do each three. That last one is distance to the pin is 10 yards. So in theory, the tightness here has to be maybe just given a little bit more speed to keep up. But like I say, they were very similar, weren't they? That's slightly out the bottom, just fading off. It misses the bunker, that could do well. It's just gonna kick off there, stop. Oh, you've done even better, Titleist. Lovely shot, oh, here you come. Back down, 16 foot to the pin. Well done, Titleist. All right, and the Callaway last, which in theory, again, doesn't need maybe the full whack, but none of them were landing possibly pin eye, were they? Got more straight with that one. Oh, I didn't fade it. So that's not actually that bad a shot. Oh, 
but that's going to be the furthest away. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? If you think about those three shots, well, let's just show you the dry data on that and think about this when you're having your fittings. So 195, 193, 193. 41, 41, 42, 17, 17, 16 spin, 128, 126, 127 ball. Look how similar these all are, but look how different they are in relation to the pin with the three shots here. This is where golf is so great, and this is where fitting can be so misconstrued, as in, what I mean by that, as in when you get fit and you think, oh, that's better, these clubs are going to be better, and you take them to the course and you don't see that. That's the reason why, because no matter what you disperse these in, and you've got to remember, I'm quite tight with my standard deviations, my means, they're all kind of like where they should be. Within reason, obviously, I'm not the best player in the world by a long way, so they could be a load tighter, but they're pretty decent. Your average handicapper, with those numbers being bigger and wider, well, I've shown you three shots there that have landed in three very different positions, but on the drivable data, you're going to see them as very similar shots. Actually, playing golf, is maybe quite different to thinking that you're buying better golf. Right, Mizuno one up. They are the winner. So Mizuno first again. Again, I'm gonna take a bit more dead aim like I did with the Canoe at the end there. Oh, I might have just cut that, I reckon. And that is, the thing is, is that is the bail. So again, on the launch monitor, that shot is gonna look like a loose one to the right. But in this situation, that bail is really working for me. And that's not the shot I tried to hit. I tried to take dead aim. See, there's so many variables, a mess when you get out there, which you've got to be careful how you read this dry data. 30 foot for the Mizuno. Again, I would take that. 210 this hole. That's still going to be, it would probably be close to gaining if there was an event here. <laughs> One that I was allowed to play in. Um, <laughs> Go, 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 go! That's a better shot, but that's the worst result. Or is it? Oh, you little member bounce. So again, look at that, so interesting. That was close to disaster, being in a place, a dead place where you might not be able to up and down it. It got a lucky kick. Obviously, that's going to happen every time. But again, on the dry ball data, that's probably looking like a better shot. It's amazing, isn't it? That's 23 foot, so tightest winning. Right, Callaway, can you? Given that sum, because I want to take that bunker out of play, if it's possible. No, no, it's right on my limit, that. That's going to be the best shot. Callaway, you are. Oh, look, I am getting cheeky little members bounces. So all three of those really good irons, 5.9, 5 foot 9 inches. Oh, Callaway, stop it. But again, if we look at this, you've got the fastest ball speed at the end here, because I did go for it a little bit more, the 196 carry to the 195. Look at these numbers. I mean, I'm averaging 193 carry with a standard deviation of two yards. Pretty good numbers. Uh, all peaking height, very similar, all spinning in a very similar region. I would honestly find it hard to pick between those. So I think the Callaway on overall looks, you'd go Mizuno if you're feel-based, you would go tightest if you're top line based. I mean, post in the comments, what do you reckon? I mean, you're three similar, which they should be. They're trying to fill the same bracket. Similar performing irons and all very good performing irons. That's a hard one to choose. What would you choose? 